This is Shelly Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the LD Micro main event in Bel Air, California, 2015. I have with me Phil Hardstein, Finjohn. It's a publicly traded company, and the symbol is F N J N. Welcome back, Phil, to SNN Live. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, as always, appreciate the opportunity. Now, for those who don't know Finjohn, let's get an overview to begin. So, the uh, company was founded in 1996 in a segment that we now refer to as cybersecurity. Uh, originally a software and hardware company, built and sold those products uh, well into the late 2000s. Also had a licensing business uh, associated with the patents that had been developed alongside those products. Um, the company to date has you know, not only built and pioneered technology, but has secured patents, has generated revenue from those assets. Um, recently, uh, this year as of March, we re-entered product development as a result of the expiration of uh, our, technically our exit in 2009. So today we're a diversified cybersecurity company. Uh, we report in four segments. We still have our legacy licensing business. Um, a lot of developments there, maybe we'll get into that. We've uh, launched an advisory services business, which we call Cyber Risk, uh, and it's based out of Tel Aviv and in the UK as well. We have a mobile security, uh, sort of consumer and enterprise platform level security, which you can access through mobile devices, which you can get through the Google Play Store uh, and the Apple iTunes Store. And we've been talking now for a couple of years about our fourth reporting line, which is an investment in an innovation fund through JVP with some international partners that's had a pretty successful run at such an early stage of, uh, of its life. So now it's Finjan Holding Company. So in your repertoire of what you are holding, what's kind of like going on in each of those and what's hot, what's new? and what's growing? It's a great question. So the, the whole idea and concept behind having a public holding company is it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility to have a diversification play. And if you think about Finjohn as it stands today, our licensing business is still our single most significant reporting segment. To date, I think we've, we've tallied more than $120 million in licenses. And on top of that, we have almost 40 million, actually just about 40 million that we've received as a result of judgments. And we have a, a recent outstanding judgment against a company called Blue Coat for another $40 million. So when you think about that licensing segment, it's got two lines. There's licensing, it's got a pipeline play. We've done several deals this year. Um, we've actually made public statements that we expect to do more. We know it's December, but we expect to close more this year as well. Uh, we've done F-Secure, we've done Avast Software. Uh, both of those are in the millions of dollars. Um, again, that pipeline is active. On the enforcement side, we had our first trial with Blue Coat. We won the jury award, $39.5 million. Uh, that was recently affirmed by the judge. She issued a judgment in that case. And what a judgment means is that now you're actually accruing interest from the file date. So certainly there are opportunities for them to continue to uh, sort of extend having to pay, but we're accruing interest on that as well. And in that, you're, I would expect uh, that you could, you, you could expect to see performance both in licensing as well on, on the enforcement side of, of that segment alone. We have two trials um, that we're expecting in 2016. The first is in uh, March with a company called Proofpoint. And the second trial is scheduled for a September start with another company in the space called Sophos. So that's you know, really our for, most For a non-law firm, you look forward to trials a lot. You know... It's really unfortunate. Our preference is always licensing. But there is something about the entire foundation for why you have intellectual property. Finjohn invested $65 million in developing that technology. They competed actively in the marketplace. We generated tens of millions, almost $75 million selling our products. It happens that the opportunity for that technology to be better played through others and for us to monetize that through licensing, it's been significant. But I will tell you, in the litigation process, what's miraculous about it is you go in front of a jury, jury of your peers and you get an opportunity to say things like, we had our headquarters right down the street, right by the airport. We had 150 employees here in the Silicon Valley. We had 10 facilities around the world where we shipped and sold products through. There's as much of that foundation that, 
was founded in the company that still exists today. And being able to tell that story and, and have your day in court, so to speak, it's unfortunate, it's very expensive, it takes a lot of time, um, but we're really happy with that process and, and just being afforded the opportunity to go through it. Cybersecurity comes up in every board meeting, at least in the United States of America. There's a portion of it that, whether it's in person, by phone, because they're worried that this company that they're involved in could get hacked. What happens when that happens, and who do they call? If it's not part of the discussion, it should be. That's the entire foundation of why we launched the Cyber Risk Advisory Services business. We went out and, and our CFO and I, we traveled the world and we wanted to identify folks that could really bring insight at a governance level to boards of public and private companies, really to help them understand what these issues are. So we've got a couple of Cisco gentlemen who are leading that initiative. That business has recently expanded from Tel Aviv into London as well. Uh, next year is going to be probably the first year where you see major contracts, but, but it is entirely focused on that premise that you stated, which is it's something that everyone should be looking at. Whether you're working a, a law firm working on a confidential settlement for some liability issue that's yet to be disclosed, or you're a payment processing uh, platform company, or whether or not you have customer well, data. you're a healthcare network. company? So who from Cisco? Uh, we hired a gentleman, uh, well, there's a couple of announcements here. So uh, the, the two gentlemen that we hired uh, in March of this year, um, Yoram Galansky and Eyal Harari, uh, both of them were with Cisco's Cybersecurity Center of Excellence in, in Tel Aviv, which is a center that they set up to do just this. Um, more rest recently, uh, within the last, I want to say, month, uh, we've been delighted to invite uh, Gary Moore uh, onto the FinJohn board. Uh, chairman? <laughs> Not chairman. <laughs> I mean, Cisco, he was big. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's really the untold story there. Gary Moore, for those who don't know, is the former president, co-president, and chief operating officer at Cisco. And when we were looking at going through, we have a staggered board rotation, and when we were looking at going through what would make sense for us in this growth stage and really diversifying our platform, we wanted someone who had real operational expertise, who could give guidance to management and help us predict where we needed to have visibility, where the trends were going. And so in spending time with Gary in advance of him uh, joining the board, he and I really reached a common understanding of what's lacking, what's not being addressed, and what it's going to take to get there. And he shared with us that he was going to do three things upon leaving Cisco. He was going to choose one executive in residence program, which he has now done, he's at The Ohio State. He was going to choose one private company, which has been announced, uh, and he was going to choose one public company. So Finjan is pleased to have him as the one public company. And his whole notion there is, I'm looking for companies that have the ability to be disruptive in the industry, to produce real value in the market, and who have a management team who's nimble enough to adapt to the changes. And so we are just delighted to join him to the board. Let me ask you a question. I, I don't want to get too long-winded, but there's a lot of little cybersecurity companies. It almost looks like the landscape is crowded cottage industry. How do you see Finjohn rolling up some of these technologies and bringing them into the fold. We refer to that as inorganic growth. Um, we've explored several acquisition opportunities. Uh, to date we have not done one. Uh, we're particularly interested in the areas of mobile, um, software, things that, that have the ability to effectively prevent cyber attacks but that also aren't intrusive to a user, either consumer or enterprise user's daily activities. A lot of things require a lot of management and fine tuning. So we're really looking at specialty things that, that we think could accelerate our growth and our transition into those areas, where we can do it at value. And maybe that value is partly that those companies would benefit as being part of a public company platform. And for us, maybe that would be a discount on price and acquisition. But the benefit in general is to shareholders as we execute on the diversification play. Okay, let's give out your website for those who want to learn more information about Finjohn. That's great. It's uh, finjohn.com, F-I-N-J-A-N.com. And again, I appreciate the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Hardstein, Finjohn. It's a cybersecurity holding company. 
publicly traded symbol is FNJN. I'm Shelly Kraft. This is SNN Live, and we're coming to you live from the LD Micro main event in Bel Air, California, 2015. Phil, always a pleasure. Thanks again. Appreciate it.